And so last week we, we kicked this idea off, this whole idea of, of just servanthood and, and being involved. And we began looking in Exodus. And this morning we're going to pick up there again in Exodus chapter 2. If you have your Bibles, Exodus chapter 2, verse 24 and 25. Had the opportunity the last couple days to be in Atlanta with some of our staff. I had a leadership conference and um, I slept probably 30 hours in two days. I should be well rested and ready to go this morning. They were all making fun of me and I said, you give me the opportunity to lay down and do nothing, I'm going to sleep the whole time. I don't know if you can relate to that. But uh, it was a great trip, uh, very challenging, a lot of education, um, really, really good for us. And uh, it got me excited this morning to share with you um, this portion of Scripture in Exodus chapter 2. I'm going to start here in verse 24. The Word of God says this, And God heard their groaning, and God remembered His covenant with Abraham and Isaac and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. To kind of back up and talk about last week a little bit, we began looking at Moses and the story of Moses and it began to unfold with Moses began by uh, murdering an Egyptian and then he ran from Pharaoh. And if you'll remember, Moses ended up here on the side of a mountain. And I shared with you that this place, the side of the mountain was just Moses' escape from his calling. That he was hiding here on the side of the mountain yet God had a plan for him. God had a direction and a plan for Moses that he wanted him to fulfill. And we want to start out this morning with these verses and I want to share this first point with you. I want you to see this morning that there was no shortage of need. So we just jump into this, that there was no shortage of need. There's never, never a shortage of needs because there's never a shortage of people who need to be ministered to. We were talking about that with um, our staff a little bit, even this last week. I just asked the question, if there was a thousand people here last Sunday, what would you do on Monday? If there was you know, 300 of us here last Sunday, what would you do? Would it change at all what you did on Monday? And we all said, well, no. And I said, well, it shouldn't, right? Because it doesn't matter if there's a thousand of us or if there's three hundred of us. It doesn't matter if there's ten or ten thousand. There's always people who need to be reached with the gospel. Right? There's always another person that needs to be, to be ministered to. There's always someone else. And so we've got to remain focused on just keeping our head down and doing the things that God wants us to do because there's never a shortage of needs. Listen, there will always be hurt, loss, and needs in our world, in our society. Just look at the events that have unfolded here even recently in our country. We, we witnessed this horrific Violent shooting in Las Vegas. The, the world seems to be in chaos around us and it seems like that's just a recurring statement, doesn't it? But the world seems to be falling apart that, that there's, if it's a protest, if it's, if it's you know, some type of shooting, that there's some type of bombing, that it's constant hurt, loss, violence, needs. There's never a shortage of needs. Why? Because sin has brought... All this violence, all this loss, and all this hurt and death into our world. You see, what we read about in Exodus chapter 2 in these two verses is the needs that the Jewish people, they, they found themselves hurting and in need of help. They were in bondage, imprisoned here as slaves in the land of Egypt. And they found themselves crying out to God. And the Bible tells us here in Exodus 2.24 that God heard their groaning, that He heard their cries for help. And now God begins to put into motion His plan, that God had a plan to meet the needs of His people. For us today, does God have a plan to meet the needs of people today? Well, if we look in the New Testament in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, I'll bring this up for you, the Bible says this, And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You see, I believe that today God does have a plan to bring deliverance to people too. Now we may not find ourselves in the same position as the Jewish people where we need deliverance like physically, that we find ourselves in a physical bondage like they were, but we certainly live in a world where people are in bondage spiritually, don't we? 
We certainly live in a world where the people around us are in bondage spiritually. In fact, they're people that you know. You know people who need to be delivered from the bondage of their sin. When you came in, you got two things, right? One was a card, and another was a piece of paper, just a blank piece of paper. If you've got that, I want you to bring that out. And you're going to have to feel like me, I never carry a pen. You might have to borrow a pen. But here's what I want you to do. On that piece of paper, I just want you to write down the name of a person, just one person, that you know needs deliverance. Maybe it's that they don't know Christ at all and they need salvation. Maybe it's a person who knows Christ but they've been away from the Lord and now they're the bondage of the consequences of their sin. Just take a moment. Just write down one name. We all know somebody, right? The reality is I know many people. Just one person. Just write down their name. You see, there's never a shortage of needs. There's never a shortage of people. I'm going to collect those in a little bit. So, I'm going to give you a little time to think about it. We're going to come back and collect those. But there's never a shortage of needs. But God had a plan to deliver the Jewish people from Egypt, and He has a plan to deliver people from their spiritual bondage today. And today, listen to me, God's plan is the church. There was no plan B. God's plan to reach the world with the gospel is the local church. It's the church and it involves you. We like to think of the church as an organization, but really it's a group of people. Right? That we together make up the church. But we would have to be blind not to see that the world is falling apart. We would have to be blind not to see that there are drastic needs. right? And we would have to be spiritually blind not to see that Satan is wreaking havoc in our world around us. right? But God had revealed to Moses here that there would be an enormous need that the, the people, the Jewish people, were crying out for deliverance and crying out for help and that God would reveal to Moses that he was to go. But God has revealed to us that there is an enormous need around us. Know today that there is no shortage of need for people to find freedom from the spiritual bondage that they live in every day. There's no shortage of need. Read on in Exodus chapter 3, which is 1 through 4. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Oreb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here am I. See, there was no shortage of need, but get to that there was no shortage of calling. There's no shortage of calling. Did you write down the name? The one name? Here's what I'm going to do. Brent's got a couple guys. They're going to come around. They're going to collect those papers from you. Now you have to scramble and write down a name, right? They're going to come around. They're just going to collect those papers. You can just pass them to the end of the row. They're going to come around and collect all your papers. Just the one person. You see... Not only was there no shortage of need, there definitely was no shortage of calling. No shortage of calling. Now here God shows up on the side of the mountain and He calls out to Moses. Moses! Moses! And He begins to deliver this calling, this direction to Moses. Now remember, this mountain was the place that Moses ran to this is the place that Moses ran to when he was hiding from Pharaoh after Moses killed uh, or, um, the Egyptian and he runs from the presence of Pharaoh. This was the mountain that Moses ran to. And God came to Moses in the very place that he was hiding at to call him out of his comfort. Isn't that interesting? That God showed up in His place of comfort, get this morning that God calls us to. 
He calls me and you. Not just people like Steve to, to be missionaries. People like us. We like to think of, uh, we want to elevate people, a missionary or a pastor. Do you know what a missionary is? It's an ordinary person who said yes to the calling. That's what it is. It's just somebody who said yes to a specific calling in their life. Doesn't mean that they're perfect people. Doesn't mean that, you know, they're, they're all the most spiritual. When you guys collect all those, make your way back up to the aisles. I think you make sure you didn't miss anybody and then just bring them up to me. Guys, get a, let me get a couple guys to come down this other aisle and just make sure we didn't miss anybody. Then I want you guys just to bring them all up here to me. You see, we have callings too. And what happens when God shows up and He calls us out of our place of comfort. He calls us out of our place of comfort. Let's grab one right there, guys. You can set them right here. Thank you. He calls us out of our place of comfort, just as He showed up in Moses' place of comfort. You see, He will call you to the respond to the, the needs of others. He will call you to put down what is easy in your life, to pick up something that will push you. God will call you, He will ask you to do things that you don't want to do, to give up things that you don't want to give up. And why? Why would God do this? Because we instinctively run to our place of comfort. We want to go hide from the calling in the place that's easy. We don't want to do things that are difficult, even if it's what the, the kingdom needs. We will run to our place of comfort. God shows up there and He says, let me call you to something different. Let me call you out of the place that you're comfortable in. Let me call you to take a step of faith that you aren't willing to take. Let me ask you to do something that might make you feel a little uncomfortable now yourself. And here's why. Why would God do that? Why would God continually push and call us out of these places of comfort? And here's why I believe why. We're going to put this up so you can read it with me. It's simply this. That your place of comfort will quickly become your place of complacency. Your place of comfort, as Moses ran to hide on the side of that mountain, his place of comfort, listen, your place of comfort will quickly become your place of complacency. The place where you will sit down and stop. The place where you will become so complacent that you're not doing anything for the kingdom of God. The place of complacency where you're content to sit back and cheer on a missionary who does the work while we don't do any work ourselves. The place of complacency, remember I said we don't have to run and hide on the side of a mountain because we've become really good at hiding in our pews. I don't have to, 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 to get called out from that place of complacency. It's so easy to sit here and watch others do the work. Watch others minister to kids. Watch others minister to, to teenagers. Watch others be greeters. Watch others do parking lot crew. Watch others do the work because I found my place of comfort, and it quickly became my place of complacency. Amen. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> Why? Because we become calloused, calloused to the calls of people. We, we become calloused when we hear. The, these Jews, they're crying out for help. And we become callous to the calls of people when they're asking for someone to lead them from bondage. We, we've become calloused to the news, to the stories of death and destruction and hatred that we witness in our world. We've seen it so much. We've heard it so much that we become callous to it. We become so callous that we drive by somebody who's homeless and begging for something and our thought instead of being heartbroken are thoughts of judgmental attitudes. Well, you know that they're on drugs or an alcoholic because we're not burdened for them. We've become mad at them. We're content to live on our mountain on the side of the mountain, as long as the death and destruction and hatred and violence that we see in the world doesn't touch our homes. I'm just content to let the world go to hell as long as my house is going to heaven. That's where we've come. 
Is that really the state of the church today? Well, I, let's talk about it. I, I, we talked, we did, I just preached a message how the, the church has become irrelevant in our, our world today. No one was sharing statistics with me. Um, one of our young leaders was sharing statistics with me that, that, you know, it's like we're losing people. For every one person who comes to the church, four people are leaving. I shared a story with some of our people on Sunday night of a man who told me the other day that he's much happier sitting on a bar stool than he ever was sitting in the church. Is it true? Have we become so calloused? If we're not careful, listen, our place of comfort will quickly become this place of, of, of complacency. And we become callous to the needs of other people, to the cry of, of, of people, to this place of bondage that they find themselves in. You see, we're just content to live on our mountain as long as that violence and destruction ever touches our home. And then one day, the bush ignites. One day, God shows up in your place of comfort. And He begins speaking to your heart and to you, into your life and to call you out to something more. To God, I wish to God that maybe today would be that day in your life. That the bush would ignite and that God would call you to something more, to do something more with your life than just what everybody else does. To make your days matter. To no longer be callous to the needs of others, but to be burdened by them and broken by them. To say, I'll give up my comfort if it helps meet their needs. I'll get down off my mountain and get to work. I'm not going to wait for anybody else to serve. They're going to have to get around me because I'm going to be the first in line. One day, a bush ignites and God begins to speak. And just like Moses, you can't stay on the mountain any longer. And let today be that day for you. Let today be the day in your life where you lay down. Remember the position of his being the shepherd had become his hiding place. Maybe today you'll lay down whatever it is you're hiding behind. And you'll pursue your calling. Exodus chapter 3 verse 11. And Moses said unto God, Who am I? This is what we're really good at. Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? See, there is no shortage of need. Right? There's no shortage of calling. God has called us all. We've all been called to be ministers of the gospel. And we can all see the, the need that the world has. But do you know what there is a shortage of? There's a shortage of leaders. There is a shortage of leaders. No shortage of need, no shortage of calling, but there is a shortage of leaders because too many of us have never moved beyond the question, who am I? Moses asked the question that we all think, well, who am I to meet the needs of others? Who am I to be able to step out in faith? Who am I to be able to do it? And we elevate missionaries or elevate pastors and we elevate these people like, well, God will use them. A missionary is just a person, an ordinary person who said yes to the calling. The bush ignited, they said yes. You can too. Who am I? Moses asked the very question that most of us have thought in the room. I could never. I can't do that. I, I'm not gifted. I, I'm not good enough. Or the really good one. I don't know enough. I'm not... And you could fill in the blank. Can I be very honest and transparent with you though, as your pastor? I feel the same way every day. Who am I? I don't know enough. I'm not good enough. Please God, don't let me mess the thing up. God, give me the wisdom just to stay focused. God, do you know how many other people you could have called to do this? I feel the same exact way every day. But somebody has to go, don't they? Somebody has to. Someone has to move. Somebody has to respond. You know why? Because someone needs to teach your kids and your grandkids. 
Someone needs to. Someone has to work in the nursery. I remember when I was the nursery director. It's okay to laugh at that. I still do. Really, my wife did all the work and I got the title. Worst nursery director in the history of nursery directors. Why? Because I didn't know how to change a diaper. But I was in charge of the nursery. Somebody has to be a greeter. Somebody has to work in a parking lot. Someone has to mow the grass. Somebody replaces light bulbs. You know how many light bulbs there is around here? A lot. Roger replaces light bulbs. Thank you, Roger. Somebody has to work in the youth room and go to all-nighters and clean up messes that they make. Somebody has to drive the van and pick up people in the morning. Thank you, Gary. Someone has to work at all these outreach events we do. We love to be part of a church that does it, but somebody has to show up and do it. Do you know why? Because someone needs to respond to the needs of others. All these obvious needs that we see around us. Someone needs to love the lost enough to invite them to church. Because we all know someone, don't we? We all know someone. All of us know someone. Someone needs to open their mouth and share the gospel. I wonder if you'll be the someone. If you'll get off your mountain. If you'll decide, I'm not going to just stay where I'm at any longer, but I'm going to move forward. I'm, when, when the bush ignites, I'm not just going to say, who am I? Because I'm going to realize it's not about who I am, but about who is calling me. I'm not going to hide anymore behind what I've always done. I'm going to ask God, what it's not about yesterday and what I did, because a lot of us, we want to live on what we did yesterday. But listen to me, yesterday's gone. And the people you reached yesterday, they don't need to be reached again if you've reached them with the gospel. But there's still a world full of people who need to be reached. If you get caught up on yesterday, you'll never experience what God wants to do tomorrow. All that matters is, is that we continue to pursue the presence of God and allow the Holy Spirit of God to lead. And God, what do you want me to do today so I'll be where you need me to be tomorrow? I wonder if you'll be the someone. Luke chapter 10, when you look here in verse 2, last portion of Scripture this morning. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that He would send forth laborers into His harvest. This is like the famous missionary verse. Every missionary has to use this verse at some point. But all it tells us is this, simply. That there are needs. And you have a calling. You have a calling. But most of us won't respond to the burning bush. Most of us will hide on our mountain. And that's why the laborers are few. But Jesus, listen to me, Jesus did not hang and die on a cross to save you so that you could find morality. He just didn't bring you morality so that you could be a good moral person. Jesus saved you. He hung and died on the cross to save you so that you could be a vessel of His love to those that need it. He gave you life, eternal life, so that you could take that message to someone else. That's why He saved you. Not just to make you moral, but to make you a vessel of His love. Do your job. I mean, isn't Christianity pretty simple? Do your job. Here's your job. You all know somebody. Next week, 65 years celebrating. 65 years next week as a church. And I've challenged you, invite somebody. 
And you wrote down, a lot of you wrote down the name of the person that you know you should be inviting. I'm going to pray for these people this morning. And I'm going to pray over them. That this week as you reach out to them and do your job, and invite them to come with you and bribe them with flubs or whatever else you need, I'm going to pray over them. And I'm going to ask that the Holy Spirit will go ahead and begin working in their heart. Because we all know somebody, don't we? You, listen, it's your family. It's your friends. It's your co-workers. Not mine. Reach them with the gospel of Jesus. Serve them. This is your calling. You spend your life looking for fulfillment. This is your calling. Serve others. Be involved in the church. We say we love the church. Then serve the church. 